Well, you better stretch your eyes to the sides of your forehead because yes, today we're taking a look at a super ultra wide OLED gaming monitor. And this one is much requested because yeah, the Samsung OLED G93 SE, the non-smart feature version, can commonly be had for just under $1,100, making it the most affordable, super ultra wide quantum.oled gaming monitor that also runs at 240 hertz. Very, very impressive. But is it actually good or is it utter slop? And it's been priced accordingly. Well, in order to find out, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. So the Samsung OLED G93 SC is a 5120 by 1440, 240 hertz, 49 inch, 32 by nine super ultra wide quantum oled v2 panel with a response time of allegedly 0.03 milliseconds yes it does have g-sync and free sync compatibility and it does have a display hdr true black 400 certification now in terms of a stand yes it does have one and i will say that i actually really like it as it has a very small footprint but be aware the vertical rotation is somewhat limited on this stand now in terms of the ports pause if you need to but be aware i did actually have to at least on my model on my firmware use display stream compression whether i was using hmi 2.1 or DisplayPort 1.4. Now, in terms of base mount compatibility, you should be able to throw this on any standard, well, stand. And I'd say the overall design of this thing is actually quite nice. I think it has a very sleek, minimalistic design that could fit in really any environment. Whether you're a major gamer boofing G Fuel up until 3 a.m. challenge, or you're an architect looking for better productivity, I think it's gonna look good on any desk. And once again, coming in just under $1,100 free frequently on Amazon. By the way, I will have an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. Use it for your convenience. The price is actually quite good, although it does come with just a standard one-year warranty from the manufacturer. So overall, it's looking like it's a really good deal for the price, but that can only be answered by actually looking at the performance. So let's start off with the color. And I will tell you right away out of the box, the colors look absolutely amazing, as is to be expected on a quantum.oled gaming monitor. I mean, of course you get the benefits of OLED such as per pixel local dimming and infinite contrast, but also quantum.oled has the best color volume of any OLED on the market. And it definitely shows when pushed to its limits. Now, in terms of the actual accuracy out of the box, sRGB on a gamma 2.2 curve looks actually pretty good. The RGB balance was a little bit off and I was able to fix that. By the way, I will have the best settings for this monitor linked in the description below in my Patreon, which also gets you access to the Discord and helps fund future reviews like this one. So thank you guys so much if you do decide to support. But if you don't, that's fine. Let's talk about HDR. Now out of the box, the HDR is a little bit off. As you can see, it is over darkening some shadows. However, thankfully I was able to fix this and this problem does exist for all HDR modes. Now in terms of the color volume, since it is quantum.oled, like I mentioned, it's absolutely excellent. We're talking 106% DCI-P3 in the HDR mode, which is very impressive. But what about the brightness? This is the most important metric for HDR gaming on an OLED monitor, as it's been their Achilles heel for quite some time. And first starting off with the HDR highlight brightness in a 10% and 1% window, here you can see that, well, the G93 SC isn't super impressive. Sure, in the peak 1000 mode, it can technically reach just over a thousand nits, but the 10% window is a measly 470 nits, which means that the actual HDR experience is gonna be quite limited in bright scenes. And I don't quite understand why they're doing this because if you take a look at the S95C TV using the same quantum.oled tech, well, that one actually has around three times higher brightness in the 10% window, making it far, far brighter for bright HDR scenes. But what about the 100% window? And this is gonna be very important for your day-to-day -day usage. And thankfully here, the Samsung G93 SC does very well giving you around 263 nits, which is in my opinion, a decent level to be using for day-to-day -day usage. But what about an actual game? And once again, brightness is an issue here. We can see that this one is technically at the bottom of the list in terms of brightness, 
but honestly, it's not going to be too much different than any other quantum.oled gaming monitor. And again, you can see that this is an area where mini LED definitely shows its strengths. And even the W OLED monitors are going to be significantly brighter in actual HDR games, albeit at a lower color volume. Now, in terms of the minimum brightness, yeah, it's OLED, so that's going to be zero, which means infinite contrast, leading to really excellent HDR presentations in darker scenes. But what about the latency? Is this usable for online competitive gaming? And the answer to that is yes. 26 milliseconds is a little bit higher than some of the best of the best that I've measured, but there is room for slight error here. And to be honest with you, this is not out of the norm. Now, what about the actual motion performance? This is a huge reason as to why you would purchase an OLED monitor. And thankfully here, what we're taking a look at is once again, excellent motion performance that absolutely destroys the mini LED counterpart, as you can see on the right. At 240 hertz, this thing is getting pretty close to the example on the left. And even at 120 hertz, it's pretty good. But of course, 60 hertz, even on OLED, is gonna be a little bit blurry. So definitely shoot for 120 hertz or higher if you get this display. But what about the text clarity and subpixel layout? And unfortunately, this is an area where I think quantum.oled has quite a few problems still. It is improved over the Gen 1 versions, but I actually believe at this point in time that quantum.oled has the worst subpixel layout out of any, well, pixel layout on the market. I think that WRGB is more clear and certainly the regular RGB layout on LCD panels is far more clear, but the improvements here have made it, I would say a lot less noticeable and overall, not too bad. But what about the finish and perceived clarity? And this is going to be controversial because yes, it does have a glossy finish, which is really excellent because that means you're going to be getting the best clarity. You're going to be getting the best perceived vibrancy as well as contrast when it's in a somewhat light controlled room. However, I would say this is the worst example of a glossy finish that exists on the market. Sure, it looks really excellent in a dark room. And in fact, I will take this 10 out of 10 times over any matte finish, no questions asked, as a matte coating significantly harms the image, but it does come with, unfortunately, very, very poor ambient light handling, where it does light up magenta when presented with even a small amount of light in a room. So you do really need to put this in a light controlled room to take full advantage of these quantum OLED panels. Hopefully this is something that can be improved in the future while retaining a glossy coating. Clearly this is something that can be solved with the use of something like Gorilla Glass or whatever LG is doing on their C series TVs where it still looks really great in bright environments, but yet retains that clarity. But in any case, Let's talk about the viewing angles and it's quantum.oled, so this is gonna be the best of the best. It looks almost perfect at any angle and the same goes for uniformity. Quantum.oled is the cleanest panel type you can get on the market and this monitor is no different. It looks absolutely excellent corner to corner. Now, in terms of the menu and firmware, honestly, this is really great as well because it gives you a lot of control and even some in HDR as well, something that's missing on a lot of monitors. So overall, Honestly, I didn't find any issues with this display either, so very impressive. And I'm gonna tell you guys, I absolutely recommend this monitor. Now be aware that Super Ultra Wide has basically almost no support in games. I can probably count on one finger the amount of games that I've played that genuinely support it correctly. I mean, sure, there's a lot of games that won't have black bars, but you are gonna get a lot of FOV stretching. But if you're okay with that, then this is gonna be an excellent monitor for you. It's also gonna be, I think, excellent for sim racing and flying and all sorts of stuff like that, where I think the support will probably be much better. And also it's gonna be an excellent monitor for productivity as it does essentially combine two monitors into one. So for those of you out there looking for that type of an experience, this is it. This is price to performance, the best you are gonna get on the market today. I highly recommend it. Once again, I'll have an affiliate link in the description below and also a ton of other monitors that I recommend below that. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 
FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.